Yo, what's up, guys? Best Clash here, back from another video. Carry about 7,602 trophies. We're gonna do something a little different today. Because I tilted all the way down to 7,300 trophies or less today. And managed to come back up by using this deck here and also trying my best. So, right now, I'm just gonna wait and see what my opponent's gonna do. He's gonna play Tombstone. So, I'm gonna left just spear in the back. Cycling back to my log. You always wanna log the Tombstone, guys. Because the more, the longer it stays on the field, the more um, value it gets. And you don't want it to pop when they're building a push because you just had to deal with an extra skeleton army coming towards your side, which you don't like. I'm going to split my guards here to defend. And while you guys are just hopping into this first match right here, make sure you leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. It helps my channel grow and other people to find me. Go for a princess like that because I'm afraid that he might have poison. So he decided to arrow that, and he was a little bolder in the back, so I'm going to rocket it, because I know in this match, um, I'm thinking that he has Graveyard, he plays Graveyard here. So I'm going for Valk in a late log, and Electro Spirit. Unfortunately, the Skeleton's got so much damage on our tower. And right now we just save our elixir. There's not nothing much we can do in this matchup besides rocket his bowler every time he plays it. Because we cannot get any damage from our goblin brawls because he have because he has arrows, fireball, and archers and bowler. Believe it or not, guys, archers are really solid counter to goblin brawl. You don't get any damage from that interaction. Also, our main goal is to bait out his spells and also make sure um this allows for our guards to survive and actually not die to his arrows. So you see there, uh, he goes in for another push here. So expect to have the guards for Valk. And I'm gonna wait a little bit, go for a log here, clean everything up, plus Electro Spirit. Uh, believe it or not, guys, I think the Electro Spirit was the MVP of this game. If I was using Ice Spirit, I don't think I had a chance. Because the graveyard RNG is too broken, in my opinion. I just go Gombrel there because he didn't have any spells in hand. For a high um, Valkyrie, because he can't. He wanted to go in there, but he decided not to. And he decided to go for a bridge battle right now. Here I'm trying to get rid of the Inferno Dragon, so. A log, Lotus Spirit, plus guards. And Inferno Tower is going to get mad value because it's also going to start locking onto the bowler. As well as playing my Valkyrie to block it. He has arrow to Gombrel and he has a fireball on my princess. This sequence is actually good for us because we actually have our guards to defend his graveyard or whatever he has. He's decided to go with the Inferno Dragon, so I'm gonna go for split guards. And luckily, magically somehow that bowler dies, which was huge. Inferno Tower sets up for another defense. Gombrel to create pressure. And then going for Valkyrie because I thought he had Fireball, so I didn't want to go for my guards. And here we're down by like 1,300 HP, which is not looking good. And I go for a Princess once again, try to bait out his Fireball. Once again, Fireball bait it out of hand, so I can use my guards if I bait out his arrows, but he's going to have it in his hand here. So I have the Rocket, and luckily I hit that Bowler, since its hitbox is so big that... No matter where you play a rocket, it's going to hit the bowler. He goes in again. This time, I'm just waiting for his arrows and then playing my guards. But played it a little too early. He got hit, but that's fine. Here's when the epic comeback um, starts, guys. So go for Renard Princess here. Try to bait out a spell. And I go for Gomba Rocket. Make sure he doesn't play his archers. And that force out our fireball from his hand. Fortunately, that one archer tanked for an Inferno Tower, but play wait a little bit to log. And I tried to kill this Inferno Dragon, but it's not going to work out. Go for Gombrel, create more pressure. Go for a nice rocket. And see how his uh, arrows are in hand. My guards just get a lot of value, and he uses a spell, so I go in super aggressive here. He's low on Elixir, and look at that, guys. His tower is down to rocket log range. See who gets her first. Rocket comes down. Log... And look at that. GG. We an insane game. This is basically one piece of rocket cycle because we had way too many counters. 
charge on Burl, and we couldn't really defend his pushes unless we beat it out of his spells with the princess. So, I'm pretty sure, guys, these matches are kind of boring, but definitely some interesting ones down back here. Um, I think against Low Boy here from Nice Strategy. Another graveyard deck, and graveyard has been a uh, meta because of the Ice Wizard buff a uh, Prince and the uh, Richard Queen. And since uh, Mother Witch is not in uh, the meta right now, currently, so we're gone, bro, like that. Notice that I put my gone, bro, uh, a little farther in, like in the original placement, it will more likely to get damage. It's more harder to detect, but that's fine. Cover Princess like that. Try to defend against Ice Wizard. For Lush Spirit in the back, he goes with the Baby Dragon. So, you always want to kite things around. So, I play my Valkyrie to pull it opposite lane. But the skeletons just drag it over, which is bad. And Baby Dragon's actually splash into our tower. I thought he was low on Elixir here, so I pressure with the guards. And right now, he has a really bad cycle because he just has three spells in the building. At the end of that trade, I just give him poison value, which is not too good. And you always want to start rocket cycling when you know your uh, opponent doesn't have anything to punish you with. Like, his hand's really bad right now, so he can go for rocket. And that's the only way you can get damage, because he has two spells. And one of them then likely not able to get the damage for a gaunt barrel once again. So he's going for a tombstone and we for Valkyrie here. Because I thought he was going to go in with a graveyard, graveyard dragon push or something like that. I'm just going to log the ice away for chip damage. And here. So we so go for guards to defend here. For Lotus Spirit, and I just cycled to my Valkyrie, went for Rocket first, <clears throat> and then block the block the Baby Dragon. So far, playing patient, guys, not using our Gone Barrel that much. And I was a bad princess because his tombstone was there, but it's a force out of Valkyrie, went for a high Inferno Tower, try to get value. And once again, Nine Elixir on our Tower, Greared Poison. For our princess apply pressure and it actually connects to his tower from one hit. So it's good, but so really low on damage. And I go for our high inferno tower, try to kill that beer dragon. He goes for aggressive tombstone. I'm not sure how I didn't lose my tower here, but for Gombra apply pressure, guards defend. Yeah, since guards have an extra HP from their shield, guys, they um, actually take a longer to die to poison, which is good. And since he just uses Barbaro, and we can outcycle it really hard here, so I went for Gombra apply pressure. She played a Valk in a really bad spot, and Goblins brought tower down all the way down to 717. We just needed our rocket plus log, but he has greater poison in hand. Guards are really solid defending against a uh, graveyard. You pre place them because they hit really fast. And look at that. Rocket plus log. Really not an intense game against a Greer deck. Just want to go high in front of towers and rocket cycle when necessary. Because you can't really get that much damage from your goblin barrels. Also, um, try not to give them too much by and spit out your troops. Alright. I'm going to show you the hog cycle deck matchups. These are kind of really boring. And a lot of people have been struggling with Golem. This is the only Golem I played today. Aside from like a Golem clone deck earlier. Okay, unfortunately he has a NATO activation there, but it's okay. Since I know his King Tower activated already, so I can go for Electric Spirit Cycle. So a log, and I meant for uh, guards. My bad. And I think I went for a Valkyrie here to defend. And like 
the graveyard matches, guys. Um, in order for me to win this match, I just had to rocket Cyclos Tower or get a really good Princess Lock because he always has Barbaro or Tornado in hand. He also has a King Tower activation, so it's really hard for us to get any damage from Goblin Barrel once again. So basically, this whole video is about uh, rocket cycling as the win condition and also log chip. Sure, uh, a pressure there to force out the bar barrel. And go for guards, easy defense, and he goes with golem in the back. So here, I go for a princess to bridge, force out an ice wizard or something. This is a good play because if they play in our troop, they probably won't have enough elixir for lightning, or will be too late for it to kill my inferno tower in time. Opponent decides to get greedy there and let our princess. Um, get some value on the tower. And believe it or not, guys, guards actually do an excellent job of DPSing things down. And look at that. We don't take too much damage, and we're in a significant damage lead by like a thousand HP. I pressure with the Electro Spirit, but I played an Ice Wizard there, so it was fine. And I went for a Gone Barrel. Um, never mind, I didn't. Went for a log. And I think we'll rock it here, because I knew that the princess still had to be dealt with. It forced out a baby dragon, which was huge. So we couldn't really build a massive push, and... The main threats of a golem push are, like, the flying units, like baby dragons, skeleton dragons. As long as you get those out of the way, it should be fine. I created pressure once again, because I thought he was going to barbell the guards, but he didn't. So able to DPS on a golem, and I think went for a log plus rocket here once again on a tower because I'm not sure about the can cart is about to die. Actually, right decision on my part because we need the damage on his tower or we're gonna lose. Go for a rock there, tank shots, and here's where it got kind of sketchy because I need to cycle back to my rocket. And I wish he played out Dark Prince a little earlier so he could have hit it with the rocket, but that was okay. Luckily he didn't go he didn't go rest of his tornado or Dark Prince would have gotten more value. Here I think we need two logs and a rocket to win. And I try to get um damage from my bar the Gombrel buddy um played a good bar bro. Here I'm just trying to cycle back to another log to finish off the game. Also while stalling the golem, the inferno tower. For Valkyrie, because I know he's going to lightning. And once again, guys, just rocket cycle, rocket plus log. Dude. And against this matchup, it's really tough because they have Barbaro. Usually, Golem decks do not have Barbaro. And yeah, it's really tough there. Sure. Anyways. Show sure you guys a match against this E Giant deck. A lot of you guys have been struggling as well against E Giant, especially the Arch Queen version, because it just demands a rocket out of your hand every time um, they play it. Once again, I'm just playing um, Passage C, wave my waiting for the opponent to make the first move. It's also because it's the last week of the season, guys, so I'm trying to play my best here and not make any like early mistakes. like. Just waiting for the uh, player to make the first move. So don't like cycle a log when they're actually playing log bait. And that's not good for us. So here I'm just waiting to see what else he's going to do. He actually uh, played a barbara there which is really bad. I tried to pr protect my princess here but kind of failed. Almost worked but it was fine. Now I basically knew what he was playing because there's only one deck that has Barbaro, Dark Prince, and Goblin Cage, and that's E Giant. So the rocket actually put us down in Elixir. Goes to the bomber, and I'm just gonna log it. You always wanna log the bomber because it's a neutral trade and you don't have to deal with it. We're going to the pressure. 
actually feel the tornado there. You always want to play your Gumbrels in the corner, like what I just did. Whenever you're playing against a beatdown deck. If you know you're playing, if your opponent's playing a beatdown deck with like um, Goblin Cage plus Dark Prince. And we actually did a really nice Goblin Cage there to protect our princess. And I went for our Electric Spirit there. In guards. I decided to log this shield back in case he wants to give us value of the Dark Prince. And go for a really quick rocket for the Arch Queen. And luckily he didn't go for E-Giant to bridge or we could have been in trouble. Decided to save my Valkyrie for the E-Giant. But Dark Prince gets a huge connection onto our tower. And I decided to go for Inferno Tower like this. And log the bomber, hoping that the princess finishes it off, but it doesn't. For Gone Barrel, by pressure, and for guards, and a late Valk. Luckily, the Valk splashes onto the Arch Queen when it's invisible still. So we're able to get some damage there. Knew we outside the Barbaro, but he's back to his tornado. And I knew that I couldn't play my princess because he had it back to his common cage already. So I played it. I think I played my princess. Yep, kind of my tower. Just resetting, trying to defend his next push because I know I'm up in damage. For Valk, same lane as the Goblin Brawler because the Goblin Brawler, you never want to underestimate it because it actually does. If you don't watch out for it, it's going to get so much damage on your tower. For a very really nice log there. And for another I'm not sure without the Bar Brawler, guys. I think that's an overcommitment because he still has to defend our Goblin Brawler here. He got greedy and decided to lightning my Inferno Tower almost, when it was almost dead. For larger Spirit, make sure that Bomber died. And so far, we're looking fine, even though we're like up by like 300 damage. There's an Arch Queen, so I decided to go for a Rocket here, plus a Valkyrie, last second. Pretty nice, just waiting for the Dark Prince to get into Rocket range as well. And with one minute left on the clock, I'm just playing defensive here. So I was trying to force out some cards out of his hand, the princess. I actually got a Barbaro out, which is huge. And Gob's actually connected, and that's a perfect opportunity to go for a rocket. Starts to, starts to rush us here, so I go for a guards. And a log. For Tower Electric Spirit as well, and he's going to lightning, so I'm just waiting here. And go for guards, Valk to help clean everything up. So go back to my Nar Inferno Tower, guys. You just want to play defensive against E Giant because one mistake can like cause you the whole game. And but we can also win by rocket cycling if you're low on damage. But you can only you can only rocket cycle when you're like in triple elixir because you need that huge uh elixir advantage to like also have enough elixir to defend. But you're not going to really break through because they always have Barbaro, Tornado, and Bomber. It's pretty difficult to break through with the Gombro once again. So just Rocket Cycle is the way to do it. And let's see. Um, so I'll just show you this match against... crazy golem clone deck that I barely got away with the victory here so once again guys I'm not going to make the first move even though I'm leaking elixir because my opponent might have like, like a bridge spam deck and as far as bridge spam is um, really popular and People can actually spam you and get away with it, and you can actually lose your whole tower by playing first. I know it sounds crazy, guys, but when you're against a bridge spam player and you play your first, like a Princess of the Bridge or something, they can just spam you like crazy, and that three elixir disadvantage actually causes, causes you to game, so safe to play um, more defensive. Later on to the season where people are getting sweaty and like 
spamming everything. You go for a high inferno tower because I hope that um you didn't have enough for a lightning, but I just for guards help DPS on that Night Witch. He decides to clone everything, so I went for Lotus of Spirit here. Lotus of Spirit does an excellent job. Once again, the MVP of this match. Very nice counter to clone spell. He starts to rush me with a Lumberjack, it's kind of weird. So I went for a Valkyrie, easy defense. And you always want to rocket the Elixir Pump because you never want to be at Elixir disadvantage later on in the game, especially against a beatdown deck where he can just spam you like crazy. And somehow he's up in Elixir by like 3, which is kind of insane. So I can't really punish him. When you're down Elixir against Golem, you do not want to punish because you need all Elixir you can have to defend. I decided to find a Princess first, so I'm going to try to outcycle his uh, arrows because I know he's going to play it. I think I went for a high Inferno Tower knowing that um, he didn't have Lightning because usually Golem clone decks do not have Lightning. It's going to use us insane rocket value, but he's going to get some chip damage there. Not too worried about that. I went for aggressive Gombra because I knew he had to play something for our princess. He goes with Skeletor on me. I'm going to go for a guard's log. Try to save my princess there, but fail. That's fine. I know he's going to golem in the back, so I go with princess aggressive, forcing out like a night witch there. And this forces him to play the golem at the bridge, which is not ideal. So I just rush him here, knowing that he's low on elixir. So it's a clone everything. And luckily, I have my rocket in hand. And the Valkyrie actually survives for a bit. And that perfect rocket. Two one VGG. Real insane game against a difficult matchup for sure. If you don't know where your opponent's playing. Uh, against Golden Clone, you gotta play precise guys. You gotta go for high in front of towers knowing that they don't have any reset. And try to avoid their arrows by cycling two princesses if possible. And only rock it when they have a bunch of stuff down. You don't want to rock it and they can Night Witch because that's negative two and they can just spam you. Optimally with like a mini horde or something. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. We did reach six out top 600 through two in a row. Very nice. Make sure you leave a like and sub sub subscribe. See you guys later. Bye guys.